Hello, my name's Angela and I am a museum supervisor at Cranwell Aviation Heritage Museum and we're in deepest stock is Lincolnshire. We tell the story of RAF College Cranwell, um, so we tell the social history side of the RAF. I'm th going to talk to you about one of our past exhibitions, High Flying Women, and that focused on a group of ladies throughout time that did amazing things and really pushed the idea that women could do jobs that men could do. The one what I'm going to focus on at the moment is a lady that was connected with RF College Cranwell and her name was Elsie McKay. She was born in Simla in India in 1893 and she was the daughter of a um, embassy official who later became a shipping magnet. But she was a bit of a, a wild card and her family had to keep a tight control over her. But she was also a role model, very much a contemporary role model. And she, because of the way she wore her hair, because she always wore stylish clothes, because she was this dark skinned, dark haired beauty. In her youth, she decided that she was going to become a film actress. And in 1919, she started her career under the name of Poppy Wyndham. And she made eight films and was in several stage plays. From then on, she decided that she was going to go into interior design. And because her family had got money and her father at that time was a shipping magnet, she, did, she designed all the interiors of his liners. After that, she got the flying bug. She decided that she wanted to learn to fly. She got a pilot's license, bought herself a plane, hence from her father's money, but she bought herself a plane. She lived in Ayrshire in Scotland and the people of Ayrshire could see her often flying about and buzzing about the skies in her plane, in her bike lane, which she called Endeavour. And it was a Detroit Stetson and it was black and gold. It was quite a flashy plane in the sky. But that went along with her image. She got a, a Rolls Royce which she drove far too fast and her family didn't like that either and they, were, they weren't happy people when she decided and was determined that she was going to fly across the Atlantic. They even tried to put a, put a court order out to stop her from doing it. She enlisted the help of a gentleman called Captain Hinchcliffe who was an ex-fighter pilot now they came to Cranwell because Cranwell had got, a, at that time, had got a really long runway and it had got one of the longest runways in the country. But Endeavour was, had, was carrying weight because it had got petrol and all the rest of it for a long distance flight so it needed the length of runway to take off. They did test flights at Cranwell for a few days and then in March, on March the 13th, they decided that they were going to go for it. So they took off from Cran Cranwell very low-key affair, they just got in the plane and took off and flew away. Five hours later, over um, the mizzen head in Ireland, they were, the plane was seen. A bit after that, um, a French ship saw them over the Atlantic, everything going fine, but they actually never arrived in, in the US. People were there waiting for her, there was crowds waiting for her, and she never arrived. And the, it's assumed that the plane went down in the Atlantic. But what's spooky is that nothing was ever found. All that we do know is that so, several months later, a small piece of the plane, which had an ID number, was washed up on the coast of Ireland and they could track that that was part of Elsie's plane. But we don't actually know whatever occurred to her. So that's the story of Elsie McKay.